Hello and welcome again to another edition of Bighorn Woodworks. My name is Paul and today I'll be sharing a video of a remodel project that we're doing in our own home. It's a multi-step project and this is just the first of several parts. We've wanted to do this for a little while now. We've got a wall up in our living room that really just kind of is boring and we wanted something that really made it stand out as a feature in the living room. So with that, this is the first step. So we've lived in this house for about 10 years now. And when we moved in, the previous owners had installed this shiplap on the bottom half of the lower level walls. The plan was always to remove it and just do a plain drywall throughout the downstairs. Now on a recent trip, my wife saw an idea for a feature wall that we felt would give a nice accent to the living room area. So here I am removing all of the boards. The intended wall is about 10 feet across. I won't need all of the wood, and I'm removing way more than I have to, but a lot of them have chips and cracks, so I'm making sure I have plenty to account for the waste. This space isn't well lit, so I'm using a super bright LED that creates this focused ring of light. It was a very hot few days, and I didn't want to break out my big halogen lights to do this job. It was a time-consuming effort, as I didn't want to break off any of the existing tongue and groove cuts. Later on, I'll go back and remove the remainder of the boards, but for now, I just need enough to do the feature wall. This is really just one piece of a much larger renovation to the entire house. Over the next month, we'll be adding granite counters, a new tile backsplash in the kitchen, plus engineered hardwood floors throughout the upper level. And hey guys, in addition to these YouTube videos, you can follow my progress on Instagram. I'll be posting updates as often as the work is being done. Now that I've harvested enough of the shiplap, I can get them out to my shop where I can remove any major marks, cracks, and other problems that might cause me headaches going forward. Using my table saw sled, I was able to get through these first cuts relatively quickly. Not much to do here, just find the junk and cut it off. Once done, I added a stop block to the table saw that allowed me to quickly and easily index the boards and cut them to the same length. I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I don't own a cabinet saw. What I'm using instead is a design that incorporates a contractor saw into a table that also serves as my router table. It was an affordable option that gives me a large and stable workspace. I love using this setup that if and when I do upgrade my saw, I will likely build another custom table like the one I have now. The design of the wall is a herringbone pattern. In all, there are over a hundred pieces. All of them need to be cut exactly the same, so most of this was just like a production line. You know, it's a very repetitive process, but at the same time, it's actually a very effective stress reducer. Just like working on the lathe, it forces you to concentrate on one thing and one thing only. Next, I moved on to the other half of my table where the router is located. This is actually the second time I've built a table for the router. I had to leave my first one behind in a move. I looked at several router tables before deciding to make this one again. The larger working surface and stable platform were something I just couldn't find without spending a lot of money. The router is bolted in place under the table and a fence rides along two slots in the table surface. It's locked in place with wing nuts and gives me an adjustment wide enough to cut six inches from the edge of my workpiece. You'll also notice that I have a plastic feather board clamped to the top. I've used this before, but this time it was just set a little too close, and this is gonna hurt. Fortunately, it was nothing more than a minor flesh wound. 
I'll proceed with a little more caution and a heavy glove in case anything else decides that it needs to fly off and hit me again. Ironically, the damage I took was all for naught, as it happened while I was cutting the tongues for each edge. As I'll explain in a little bit, I don't actually use tongue cuts on the edge when doing a herringbone. The last step at the router is to cut the beveled edges. This will match the bevel along the long sides and create a consistent look for all of the joints. Yeah, quick little improvement to my router setup. Just took and cut a piece of uh, wood, put a hole in it. I actually nailed it, but then I, I put the tape around it to seal the edges. And then vacuum six right in. Instead of sanding to finish off these boards, I saved myself a lot of time by running them through the planer. In addition to saving time, it also saved on sandings. The finish on these boards was leaving a residue on the paper that I was having to stop and clean off every few minutes. And with the help of my wife, I will run the long boards through as well. These will be used to create the border around the herringbone pattern. I wasn't able to escape sanding altogether. The bevels along the edge and through the middle needed to be sanded by hand. And by hand I mean with a random orbital sander. Occasionally the sander would catch and slip causing some marks in the surface. Since the intent is to create a more distressed look, these aren't really a concern and will actually give character to the overall look. Clip, I was playing around with my time-lapse feature. It helped save some space on my memory card, but it didn't keep me from having to sand the edges on all these boards. Once I've completed the sanding, I spread out the longer boards so I could use it as a temporary work surface. The benches in my shop are long enough, but not deep enough for me to try and dry fit the assembly of all these herringbone pieces. So I have this carefully laid out plan on how this needs to work. I'll measure the length and then start dry assembling the pieces like a repetitive puzzle. And it's at this point where I start to wonder if I've done something really wrong. As it turns out, the tongue I so carefully cut earlier on the router is not used in a herringbone pattern unless you can flip the boards over and use either side. The solution? Cut the tongue off every board and replace it with another groove. Then use strips cut to fit between the grooves that will hold everything in alignment. 
with that complete, I can start cutting and fitting in the smaller pieces at the bottom and get this first row assembled and ready to go up on the wall. All right, so I left off yesterday. I had gotten the whole row done, the, uh, the bottom row anyway. I'm out to nine feet. So end to end. This piece here, this would actually mark the end of the nine feet. I've got it cut, but I need to be able to put the uh, groove down in here. I actually have to do that groove all the way along the bottom. So. Uh, right now, just take all my clamps off. I'll do these in sections. I'll just grab the first section, cut them in, put it back, grab a section, cut it in, put it back. Um, and then after I'm done with that, I'll start working up the sides. And I'll finally get to the point where there's really no more that I can do in here. Then I'll have to actually start taking it inside, which means that I've got to do some deconstruction on the wall inside for this to be able to go on. So right now, just doing that. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I really hope you appreciated what I've done in this video. There'll be several more. I'm not sure how many as we go through this whole remodel process. The next video will be of me putting the finishing touches on the wall. Further videos will include me doing the kitchen, doing some flooring and other stuff. Very excited to have all this done. Also an update on uh, the show. I had mentioned in my last video that we we're going to be doing a show. I've confirmed I am going to be doing uh, what's called Art in the Park if you're in the Stevens Point area around central Wisconsin on September 15th. It's an art show that's held every year. This will be my first time doing Art in the Park. I'm very excited to do that. So again, look for me if you're there, Bighorn Woodworks, September 15th in Stevens Point. Again, thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm updating videos twice a month and I'm on my Instagram daily. Until then, see you later.